The Argos made easy work of the Choctaws of Mississippi College. Now they prep for a winless Delta State team. Pete Shinnick's here to break it all down. Plus, we have defensive line coach Alex Crutch mic'd up. We check in with the nationally ranked Argo volleyball team, and you get to know women's soccer's Denisha Blackwood. We have so much more in this packed Coach Shinnick show on the UWF Sports Network. It starts now. <laughs> Welcome into the Coach Shinnick Show. So much to get to, so let's get right to it. He's Coach Shinnick. I'm Tommy Thrall. Thanks for joining us, and a nice win over Mississippi College. Their offense kind of gave you guys some fits there a little bit, though. They did. We, we knew coming in that uh, their quarterback was dynamic um, until you see him in person. I don't think you realize how dynamic he is, uh, some of those plays that he made. Uh, but we also knew he was prone to turn the ball over. And for our defense to get five turnovers, uh, that's a great accomplishment, and I think it kind of evened itself out a little bit. Uh, what gave you the, really the most trouble with, with their quarterback? Well, a couple things. His athleticism is off the charts for um, you, you know that position. Uh, typically, you don't have that type of guy. He's basically a wide receiver uh, playing quarterback. And then the other thing is, you, you know, uh, they have certain design plays where guys are supposed to be and go, and uh, he just sometimes kind of runs <laughs> wherever he wants. And uh, we, we, we saw, you know, our guys chasing him around the field quite a bit. We've got some examples of that we'll take a look at in a little <laughs> bit. But you guys moved the ball pretty effectively offensively early. Uh, it, it seemed like you had some mismatches. Were there some things that you saw on tape? Were there some of those mismatches that you guys saw going into it that you knew you could exploit? Well, they were going to play a lot of cover zero. And I think you looked at what cover zero is, is there's, you know, you're, you're, you're playing pure man with nobody over the middle. And they do that really to crowd the box in the run game. And you saw our run game, uh, you know, I mean, we, we didn't run it as much as we typically do. And the reason is there was just so many people around uh, the box. And, you know, our O-line's doing a great job blocking everybody, but then there's one guy sitting there that we can't account for. Uh, so we felt like our matchups, and we feel like that, you know, with our wide receivers, uh, that if we get the matchups we want, we're going to try to exploit them. Well, it worked out pretty well for you. I don't think you missed the run game too much in that game. <laughs> Let's take a look at the highlights. And uh, it was always... Uh, you know, it's not a terrible trip to go up there. You had the rain, though, when you came out of the gate, had to settle for a field goal on that first drive. Yeah, we did. Um, I think we had a couple opportunities there that, uh, you know, they did a good job of, but it's always good to have Austin Williams to get that yardage. And then uh, right there, Gage Kroll uh, scoring the first of his two touchdowns. That was great to see. And um, here's their quarterback, really strong arm. I mean, you, you wouldn't know that he's not a pocket guy by that throw. And, uh, you know, he does that enough. I was a little surprised they didn't try to go to that a little bit more. Another big game uh, for Tate Lee Teal. Tate just had a phenomenal game, and really, he's, he's been great all four games. I mean, he's one of our best blockers as a wide receiver, uh, and he's caught everything that's been close to him. And this play got a little crazy, didn't it? Well, this is just shows you that, you know, typically that guy's going to be down and, I mean, I, you can't cover people for 10 seconds. I mean, it's just really too hard. Uh, now, we did have a couple of missed tackles, but part of that is their athleticism and them doing really everything that they, uh, you, you know, wanted to there. Well, we talked that you didn't get a ton on the ground, but here Chris Schwartz punched one in. Chris, really, I mean, he's been running the ball great, and that's good for him to get a touchdown. Sam Vaughn did a great job of uh, kneeling at the one-yard line on the play before <laughs> so Chris could get a rushing touchdown. Yeah, how about that play? Uh, he, he tried to slide in. I thought it was the smart play. Sometimes you see a guy drop the ball trying to celebrate before they get to the end zone. I thought sliding, trying to make a smart play, maybe uh, isn't quite as uh, – perhaps irritating in your eyes. Probably a little too smart, <laughs> uh, you know. And, and I see what he saw, and, you know, he's running, he's open field, he has it. Uh, it's just, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna go the back of you, not the front of you. And, I mean, he was right. clearly in the end zone, but where his, uh, the back of his body was. Uh, but, again, you know, Chris is happy. <laughs> <laughs> that works. We caught up post game with Marvin Conley and Austin Williams. Yeah, man. We, I mean, we played Carson Newman first game, so we had we were familiar with it. So we came in here prepared, man. All week we worked on it. I was itching for it. Man, hey, everybody was getting that turnover. I had to sign my name on that thing. You run hard, hustle, you're going to get them things. It's great to be able to go out there and have guys like Austin Johnson, you know, Twan, and our entire line right there just to have my back so I can be able to make a field goal like that. So that's pretty much what's going through my head. I can feel completely comfortable when I have those guys, you know. That game was delayed almost two hours at the start. How do you keep everybody fresh? How do you keep everybody loose while you wait that delay out? 
You know, I, I had a rain delay early in my coaching career. Um, Players didn't have as much on their cell phones as they do now. Guys weren't as actively involved, you know, social media, that type of thing. Uh, I think for our guys, most of them, that you know, they were playing some sort of game on their phone. They were doing something. Uh, I don't know that it was that big of a distraction. We went around about every 30 minutes and said, look, we're going to get this game in no matter what. We got till midnight to start it. Mm -hmm. So... We, uh, we brought in some extra food for our guys and kind of fed them again. And, uh, you know, I, I think when it was all said and done, I don't think that really had much to do with anything. Was there ever any discussion about possibly pushing it back to Sunday? There wasn't, but we were prepared for that. We had actually, um, you know, Caleb Nobles handles all our travel as well as coaches our quarterbacks. Uh, he had already called the hotel, and we had already set up a pregame. We had already set up to get more food for a postgame <laughs> meal, go back to that hotel, and then have a breakfast. And we were ready to play any time. And that's we, – we just – kept telling our guys, we're going to play this game no matter what, guys. So just be ready whenever they say we can go. I know that you've gone with Sam Vaughn, I'm sure longer than you intended to this season, uh, but he seems to still be making progress. Looked in sync again. Are you still seeing the progress week to week as you were out of him early? We are, and I think there's still some areas that he just hasn't experienced. You know, um, one of the things that we got out of Mike last year, uh, and it was really after about his fourth, fifth start, I mean, started to see things, not make the same mistakes twice. Sam's doing that exact same thing, and obviously we've put the ball up quite a few times the last couple of weeks, um, but that's because we have confidence in what he's able to do. You saw some really nice throws, you saw some great catches, you saw some great ball placement, and then you saw somewhere uh, okay we got to set our feet a little bit better okay we got a little put a little more air on this uh, I, I think we really had the opportunity for two or three more touchdowns uh, that could have easily happened and I think we're going to get those as uh, you know two weeks ago we were hoping to get some of the connections that mm -hmm. we had this week so I like his progress and we just continue to take this thing really day by day with him leading the offense you go to the national championship and then everybody expects you to pick up right where you left off it just doesn't work that way so when you look at last year and look at where this team was at this point a season ago. Now you look at this team, all right? Are, are you seeing that same progress? Are you still ahead of where you were maybe at this point a year ago? We're ahead because of who we've had to play week one and two. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're a much better team uh, than we were uh, a year ago going into game four. And so uh, now going into game five this week, uh, I mean, I really like the progress we've made and the maturity that we're seeing out of a lot of our guys. And a lot of the same people who were helping us last year at this time are still in the mix and getting it done for mm -hmm. us. Well, it's certainly been exciting to see and still plenty more to talk about from this game. The Argos forced five turnovers. Is it the power of the turnover shield? We'll discuss it next. This is the Coach Chinnick Show on the EWF. <laughs> We will never settle for the kiddie pool. We are destined for the vast ocean of opportunities that await us. We were born to make a splash. At the University of West Florida, you can make a discovery, make a difference, make a splash. So take a deep breath and dive in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Water. It's life's most basic need. But there's a water crisis in our world right now. Nearly one billion people live without clean drinking water. About every 19 seconds, a mother loses one of her children to a water-related illness. The water crisis is vast, but we can solve it. Just $20 can provide one person with access to a clean water project in their village. CharityWater.org. Join us. Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. We talked about the turnovers briefly in the first segment. You mentioned it, five turnovers. You felt like that might be something where you, you might have an opportunity to force some. Did, did, what did you see that made you kind of realize, hey, we've got a chance to get some takeaways? Yeah, Dar I think Darian does a fantastic job of analyzing, you know, the guys we're going against, who carries the ball where, how they do that. Uh, our defensive staff works tirelessly on turnovers, uh, constantly talking about it. So really feeding off of them, we felt like, you know, by how, how they carried the ball, how the quarterback did things uh, that we were going to be able to get uh, a few. Uh, I think if we don't get them, it's a completely different game. Mm -hmm. And so that's how crucial those were in that game to be able to put us where we were. Have you felt a need over the first three games to maybe 
ratchet up the pressure and, and, and try to get some more takeaways? Well, I think it naturally comes. I, I think, you know, we, we talk, you know, when you watch us defensively, what are people seeing and what are people, uh, you know, preparing for? Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, you, you got you to hold on to the ball when you play against us because I think we strip it extremely well. Uh, number two, you got to have pressure, uh, you know, from every place. So your protection better be pretty good. And then number three, you see uh, really 11 guys around the football. So I, I think – People know that, but yet to still go out and get five turnovers, uh, it's a great accomplishment. Why are you guys so good at stripping the football? Well, we work on it. We really do. We talk about it. It was one of the things, uh, really, when Darian came in uh, and we were going into spring ball, his first spring, he said, hey, do you mind if when we go against uh, you guys that we're constantly trying to rip the ball, whistle blows, we're still punching at it? And I was like, that's fantastic. And we really haven't turned the ball over much since he implemented that for our defense trying to do it because now our guys' awareness is raised. We, we've put the ball on the ground more than I want to this year, sure. um, but uh, we've still been pretty good with the number of plays that we've run and, you know, uh, when you consider that. Yeah, when you run more plays, I guess the, inherently the risk is going to go up a little bit. You talked about Darian and not just putting pressure on the football, but also – just he seems to know when to ratchet up the pressure and, and come after a quarterback and, and get guys in the backfield. How do you game plan that? Well, he does a great job of really getting a feel for uh, what they're doing, what he needs to do, how he adjusts. Uh, really, you, you know, he's got a very, very good defensive mind and sees things, I think, uh, extremely well and really studies our opponent to where, okay, hey, this is probably what they're going to do. This is what they thought to do. This is what going to take place and uh, you know his mind and our guys you know um, you know uh, really communicating what's going on and him uh, addressing the needs in between the breaks all that plays out and I, I think you're seeing you know a really good defense that's hard to score on well it certainly is and it's been the case over the last couple of years when you when you go through or when he's going through that what's that process like how much communication is there or is that just you saying hey it's yours go go get it one of the things I've always done I've been a head coach for 20 years one of the things I've always done is I've I've hired a defensive coordinator and really I've told him a couple things. I mean, number one, um, you you know, you got to have answers for the problems uh, because that's that's your job. Uh, Number two, I hate big plays. Okay, so keep everything (laughs) in front of you, you know, and and then, you know, number three, I want to make it hard on the quarterback. And so that that's where the pressure comes from. Um, I think if a quarterback's always moving and doing things, it's hard for him to be successful Uh, during the game. We'll talk. Um, you, you, you know, they, they, they threw the uh, double move, you know, to right. start the second half. Uh, they had the long run on him running around. You know, and I was like, all right, there's their cheap one. You, you know what I mean? Uh, if, if, if they play long enough, they're going to get one of those just because of how athletic the quarterback is. But really, for the most part, we didn't see, you know, 70-yard runs, 80-yard, right. that type of thing. And, again, I think that's just a credit to him putting people in the right place. I pretty much let him manage the game and just kind of make sure that, you, you know, you seeing what I'm seeing? We're on the same page. Oh, very good. Well, the, the quite a few Argo fans made the short four-hour trip up to Clinton, Mississippi. There were plenty of Litios there as well. Take a look. Now tell me, you were saying, how far did we drive to get here? It was about a good 13, 14 hours. West Palm Beach. That's pretty incredible. Yep. Uh, what, what's the furthest trip you've made? We went to Texas, actually. Yes, but we flew. But we flew. Most of them, like the Texas game we didn't go to, it's a little far, but if it's within like six hours, we definitely go. What do you think so far of the season so far? Just kind of I think they're doing ball? great. I mean, it's so much fun to watch. Like being in Pensacola and at the Wahoo Stadium and everything, it's so much fun. And especially watching Devin, like it's just been a really awesome experience and him staying home and being in Pensacola. So it's been really good. Great stuff there. Always good to see Argo fans on the road. Football isn't the only Argo program enjoying success this fall. Everybody is. We'll fill you in next. This is the Coach Hinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. We are not here to drift. We were born to move to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? 
be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Welcome back. The Coach Shittick Show will bring Coach back shortly, but there's a lot happening on campus to tell you about. We start with men's soccer. The Argos are averaging three goals a game and lead the GSC as a team in just about every major category. They've scored 21 goals, four more than the next closest team. The way the Argos are going, that gap will only expand. They played host to Pensacola Christian on Friday. They entered the game having scored four goals in three straight games. They snapped that skid. They scored seven in a 7 nothing win. Sean Hofstetter was at it again with his second straight hat trick to take over the GSC leading goals with eight. The Argos are 4-2-1 and one with four straight wins heading into a pair of road bouts over the weekend. For the women, the Argos fell out of the top five last week despite remaining undefeated. They should climb a bit after sweeping the weekend. They claimed wins over West Georgia Friday and Valdosta State on Sunday, both shutouts, 1-0 and 3-0 respectively. Jessica Quigsley led the way for the Argos with three of the four UWF goals over the weekend. Like the men, the women lead the GSC in most major categories. Quigsley is one goal off the GSC lead behind Lee's Mia Hollingsworth. Denisha Blackwood is a key part of this Argos team, but when she's not with the team, she's competing for the Jamaican national team. Here's more. The first time I got invited, I was really surprised because I really didn't know at the time that they had a national team because at that age I was so young. But when I started playing, I was like, this is something serious. Like, this is my country I'm playing for, so like it has to take everything. When you're in a different country and you see your flag raised, you're, and you put your hand across your chest, you're like, this is your country. Like Us playing for our country is everything to us. It's our heart. We have the passion to just play and win to make our country proud. You have to be committed to both soccer and school at the same time. So you just have to be focused and know that you have to manage both very well. This is the final round towards the World Cup, so this is the country where we'll, where we'll be playing Canada, Cuba, and Panama in our round. Our team, we've been together since May, the same team over and over. And I think that we've been proved from May to now, like, we are very confident going in this tournament. Both soccers are worth getting out to the pitch to see. They're both on the road this weekend, but get to GoArgos.com to mark your calendars to check them out when they return home. Melissa Walters' volleyball team is off to a roaring start. They've only lost four matches so far. Three were to ranked teams. They've been dominant, and they showed, and it continued over the weekend. First, with a 3-0 sweep over West Georgia on Friday night, and again Saturday, with the same score against Valdosta State. Nadine Williams had a huge weekend with 21 kills between the two days. As she should, Walter liked the way the weekend went. We're starting to see specific players step up night in and night out and um, I think this was a great weekend for us you know statistically speaking our offense both nights was really really strong. They're still home for their next four matches including Thursday against Bonavallo. Get the full slate and updates at GoArgos.com. Football is an intense game and there might not be anybody more intense on the Argos sidelines during a game than defensive line coach Alex Crutch. For some reason he let us mic him up. In the second half of the game Saturday, now you get to see the result. Let's go, O. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Great job there being smart. You almost made a mistake there. Yeah, I, mean, well, I, was told, I was screaming, come inside, come inside. Come inside. Right, come inside. My arm, my we got to mean that, man. You just were smart. You were just smart. Uno, uno, uno. Field position right here. Field position. Let's go. They all are. They all are. But let's go. Let's go. If you don't give you a new front, stay in the front and just run the call. Does that make sense? Right? Well, that was almost targeted. You know, but it's that thing that we always talk about in practice when I'm 
when we're playing the vertical, we try to lean into him too much. Instead of working vertical, we're oh, not aware where is the point where the ball is going to be possible. You know? So we're like 404, blah, blah, blah. We're in Kodiak, which is a style 404. And then pistol, pistol, pistol. We look to the sideline. Coach gives us like a bump, right? The freak now, because most comes from the boundary, right? The freak now doesn't need to move out to a five, but as that thing turns past, be ready to work out to contain. Does that make sense? Okay, everyone understand that? So you just, it's basically normal rules if we were in 404 and we call the mo. Oh, it's fast, I'll, I'll be ready to ice pick out of that thing or whatever. Does that make sense? Let's get it, get your piss hot, Let's go, bro. Let's go, Let's go Let's roll. Roll. Back. Backside pursuits, gotta keep coming. All right, just get your air and water, let him sit down. Hey, you got him on the ropes, just gotta keep playing on Let's go, home! Oh. You gotta knock these boys out, man. Hey, pick your head up. Hey, you also take this one sack, one TFL, you're gonna be fine. I'm good, I'm good. Great stuff there. Thanks to Will Kennedy for putting that together for us. Catching passes over the middle can be a dangerous game for Argo receiver Tate Leto. He seems to wear the hits as a badge of honor. He leads the GSC with 23 catches and 328 receiving yards. Hard hits aren't a stat, but I'm guessing he would probably lead all conference receivers in that category, too. He's with us in studio now. Tate, welcome. How you been? Great, great. Yeah. Had a great week. Yeah, you did. Pretty good against Mississippi College. Do you wake up on Sunday mornings just stiff as a board? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> uh, I like to stretch, definitely, Saturday night a little bit because... It wears on you for sure. So. I, I bet. So so what's the key? You, you go over the middle a lot. Almost always it looks like you're going to get snapped in two. So, so do, you, do you kind of do, do you, do you take that as a point of pride? Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely not scared to go over the middle. Uh, just going to catch it uh, and absorb the hit. Uh, the hit doesn't feel nearly as hard when you catch it for sure. So, How's it been working with Sam this year? Oh, great. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sam. He's a great player, great person. Uh, he's my roommate on the, uh, on the away trips as well, so we, we've uh, got a close bond. Is that part of the reason why uh, you maybe lead the conference in receptions, because your, your roommate's looking out for it? I'm not sure, honestly. <laughs> uh, I think he's good at taking the reads, so uh, just the other receivers have been doing a great job uh, as well, getting open, so it's just week to week who's going to be open. Uh, you oftentimes, I'm sure, when the ball comes your way, you know there's a hit coming on the other side of it. So, so how do you block that out and still go ahead and make the play? Right, yeah, a lot of times you see it coming. Um, I just focus on the ball, kind of have tunnel vision for the ball, stare at it, uh, catch it, and get in a position where you're going to hold on to the ball after the hit as well. Uh, you've made considerable progress over the last, well, now in your third year here. Uh, where do you feel like the biggest, you know, where, where, where do you feel you've made the biggest strides in your game? Uh, definitely just the little techniques, uh, whether it's using your arms in your route, leverage, uh, really understanding defenses makes a huge difference as uh, just a little separation that you need to, to catch the ball. So. What are you looking for pre-snap? Is there something that you kind of have your eye on to know, all right, if I do this, if I can get by this guy, I may have an opportunity here? Right, yeah, so we watch a lot of film. Uh, we basically break down their defenses, what they're going to be in and what formations we're in as well. Uh, so I'm just looking at the safeties, what they're doing, linebackers and corners really. Uh, trying to figure out what coverage they're in so I can manipulate the coverage and get open. You're from Parkland, Florida, about an hour from Melbourne where Florida Tech is. Right. They're, they're a few weeks away on the schedule, right. but is that a game you always kind of circle on the calendar? Yeah, oh, I always circle them. <laughs> uh, my brother plays there, as you know, so uh, definitely a big game for me. Whole family's coming up this year to watch, uh, brothers, sisters, cousins, all that kind of thing. So. Uh, excited always for them. No doubt. Well, you had the whole family or a lot of the family up in Mississippi College cheering you on. I'm sure that was a great thrill as well. Yeah, awesome. Well, good stuff. Tate, thanks so much and uh, good luck the rest of the year. Thank you very much. All right, that's Tate Letio joining us. Next up is Windless Delta State. It sounds weird saying that. We'll discuss the dangers of this game with head coach Pete Chinnick. He's back in studio with us next on The Coach Chinnick Show, UWF Sports Network. Let's be a left -o. The world is our ocean, and we are here to make a splash, to dive deep, to create, to develop, to break through. At the University of West Florida, there's no limit to how you can make a splash. Don't just sit on shore, jump in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Water, it's life's most basic need. But there's a water crisis in our world right now. 
Nearly one billion people live without clean drinking water. About every 19 seconds, a mother loses one of her children to a water-related illness. The water crisis is vast, but we can solve it. Just $20 can provide one person with access to a clean water project in their village. CharityWater.org. Join us. And welcome back. About time to wrap things up here on the Coach Chinnick Show, but now it's time to preview Delta State. Coach, they're 0-4, but I think we all know Delta State is not an 0-4 football game. They're going to have some wins at some point. How concerning is that this is a team that's not just hungry but desperate for a win right now? Well, I think I think they're they're a wild card. I mean, they're they're they've always been dangerous. We you know uh, you get to say this you know in the first couple of years of your program, but in the history of our program, <laughs> we've never beaten Delta State. So uh, that's something that you know we have the opportunity to do, and that's kind of how you know we've talked to our team. Uh, they're still a scary group. I mean, their their offense they're going to try to run 95 plays uh, during the game. I think that's what they did to us last year. Uh, they're still explosive. Probably the most athletic wide receivers that we've seen, including Midwestern State. Uh, Defensively, they're going to crowd the box just like Mississippi College. So the passing game has to be on. Uh, you know, I, I sit here and go, okay, this it's a dangerous group. They've played really good people. Everybody they played, I think, has a winning record. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what to expect right now. <laughs> You've mentioned some of those games in the last couple of years. I, there have been some wild games, especially the last time, the first time, and only other time we've, we've been at Delta State. Is there perhaps a rivalry budding here? Well, I think for you know, I think if we beat them this year, then yeah, there can be a rivalry. <laughs> I've I've always said until you beat somebody, there really can't be a rivalry. Uh, but w with that being said. What amazing games from a fan perspective right. that we have played with them. Uh, you know, we got the big lead uh, two years ago up there um, and then couldn't hold on and had a turnover that really, I think, you know, we, we, we had an open guy on a trick play and we turn it over. Um, that could have changed the game. And then last year, you know, we're leading, everything's going good, and we get, we get a field goal blocked, which – you know, instead of having a 10-point lead, now it's, you know, uh, it's a tie game. So um, I've been, you know, really gut-wrenched through watching those games. As a fan, you got to love them. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think this is our year to see if we can, you know, take care of that. He's an elephant. He doesn't forget anything. <laughs> Not, <do you>? at <laughs> <all>. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. They've got a freshman quarterback right now. Uh, Breck Reddick's been out. Division one transfer, a guy that's been a pretty good quarterback for him last year. Uh how is their quarterback play been? And when you've got a freshman in there, it seems like those guys can be dangerous because week to week you don't know what you're going to get, and they're going to continue to improve. Yeah, he, he has really gotten better, and you can see it from, uh, you know, when he stepped on. And I think that really – uh, to, to analyze him, and one of the things I always try to do is look at a guy's incompletions and then look at his completions. So I took all his com incompletions, and he looks like a, a freshman. Uh, then I took all his completions, and you're like, wow, he's throwing the ball in there. He's, he's hitting those wide receivers. He's giving those guys a chance. He's doing everything that he possibly can. So, uh, you know, with a freshman, he's getting better. We're now, I think, the fourth game that he's going to be playing in. Uh, you know, there's going to be some uh, success ratio there that we've got to find a way to shut down. When you look at your team, how healthy are you? I know there have been some guys banged up. Some of those guys starting to come back? Yeah, you know, we played last week without Jonathan Coleman, our starting linebacker and really leading tackler, uh, last year through the last half of the season. Finally get him back. We played last week without Samuel Antoine, uh, our starting left tackle, be able to get him back. Uh, Mike and Quaid are the two that are seeing the doctor, and we should have news later this week. How, how much does Quaid change the offense a little bit when he's able to – be part of that rotation at running back? Just, a, just you know, kind of a, a, a heavier version of Chris Schwarz. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, as, as it gets late in the game, running through those arm tackles, that type of thing. Uh, I'm really pleased with how Chris and Anthony have kind of filled that void of Quaid not being there. And then Javon Newton has really come on strong uh, replacing Quaid, and we've been able to get him some touches, and he, he's done a nice job running as well. What are some points of emphasis this week heading into this game against an 0-4 but yet dangerous Delta State team? Yeah, I think uh, – you know, special teams have to be really good. They've got dynamic returners in both the punt and kickoff, and, uh, you know, we've got to be really, really good there. Uh, and then defensively, uh, just got to continue with the swarm mentality that we have. Get a bunch of guys around the ball uh, and get some of those tackles that we need to get. Offensively, can't turn the ball over. We really, really just need to hold on to the ball and uh, give us an opportunity to uh, either continue drives or, you know, if we got to punt, punt. 
Can you make a freshman quarterback uncomfortable if he's the guy back there? I think we can make any quarterback uncomfortable with what we do defensively, and, you know, that's going to be part of the game plan. All right, Coach, good luck. Certainly uh, should be a fun one up there in Cleveland. <laughs> all right, that is head coach Pete Shinnick. That's all the time we have this week. Game time is set for 6 o'clock. We'll be on the air with the Argo kickoff show at 5.30 on 94.5 ESPN Pensacola. For head coach Pete Shinnick, Tate Leteo, and our entire crew, I'm Tommy Thrall. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.